Hi everybody. Well, you have chosen to participate in the lecture in the course Wireless Sender Networks and uh, I am Felix. I am going to give this lecture in this semester. And well, I'm doing research in the area of computer networks, wireless networks and such things. And I do this at Technische Universität Braunschweig in Braunschweig, Germany. And uh, well, for today, I'm just I just want to give you a short introduction and some kind of motivation for the topic. So basically, what are wireless sender networks? What can you do with them? Uh, and uh, well, during the lecture, we will have a deeper look at uh, questions like what is so special about wireless sender networks? What is different from other networks? What are challenges? What are opportunities? And we will have a deeper insight in all of the topics uh, I present to you on this slide. But uh, let's start with a short overview and uh, a little motivation uh, and then we're going to all of these topic topics very, very shortly. And um, to, to motivate, let's start by applications. And there I just have one example. We will have a few more examples during the lecture. Um, but for now, uh, think about wildlife monitoring. Think about maybe these zebras you want to learn stuff about. Maybe H how are they moving? When are they moving? Do they rest? Do they move in groups? Where are they resting? What paths do they take? Questions like this. And well, you could answer these questions or try to answer these questions if you take a bunch of scientists, place them in trees and let them observe uh, the animals with their own eyes. But uh, well, this is a huge waste of time, a waste of money or even life because uh, sometimes animals are not so kind and maybe won't try to harm you and on the other hand they will probably behave very differently uh, when they feel observed or not. So wildlife monitoring could be done with a wireless sensor network. In this case you attach wireless sensor nodes which are basically little tiny computers on every zebra or, zebra or this herd and uh, it's collecting movement data, it's collecting neighbor data so which are the other animals in the area and you could then collect this data again and have a, a look at it on your PC in a safe area and uh, not surrounded by lions or so. So wildlife monitoring may be one example of an application you can to use a wireless sensor network for, but there are many, many others. But let's stick to this application for uh, this small uh, lecture. And um, well, if you want to monitor these zebras, or if you want to know where they are and where they move and how they move, you need, first of all, a sensor. So in this case, probably a GPS sensor or other satellite-based uh, location sensors. Uh, but thinking of other use cases, it may be also of interest to if there is any, well, ga gas around or uh, what is the exact distance to some other uh, objects with probably ultrasonic sensors or even camera sensors or just simple temperature sensors. Um, just to give you a small uh, um, number of different sensors we can think about. And once we selected the sensors we use, we need for our, well, experiments, uh, we have to think about processors. So uh, there are many different processors uh, from little 8-bit microcontrollers to 64-bit high power PC or um, Intel based um, Core i whatever uh, and this surely has to depend on the use case. If you think about 
a camera here in the lower right, you probably n have to be able to at least process big data. But if you want, just want to measure temperature once in a while, a little 8-bit microcontroller might be sufficient. So, pr but processes is also at least worth looking at. And when we've done this, uh, we have to look at the radios. So how can data be transmitted wirelessly? Uh, there are many different technologies. Uh, you probably heard of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and stuff. And they all differ in the data rate and the energy consumption. And uh, we, depending on the use case, we al also have to think about antennas because uh, they may be there may be directed antennas which can be used in very static use cases so when I'm able to place an antenna on purpose I can get a high gain by letting it face in the correct direction. If I deploy a network more randomly maybe I want some kind of omnidirectional antenna. So. And last but not least on the hardware side we have to think about energy because well, and our zebra use case, uh, there are no cables attached to, to the zebras, at least no power cables, which uh, then uh, are, well, plugged in a power outlet. So uh, in most cases, these um, things will be battery powered. And, well, such a battery will not be worn by a zebra because it's several kilograms heavy. Uh, there are other opportunities to get the energy, like RFID powered energy and um, different batteries of course as well but uh, when you think about batteries uh, you also have to think about uh, that well maybe um, uh, the battery is uh, dependent on the temperature and most of the batteries are dependent on the temperature so it also depends on what you want to monitor so energy is a huge topic when talking about wireless sensor networks. But so far for the hardware part, now let's go to the software part, um, medium access control. So when your radio is sending data, you have to think about when is the perfect time to send data. Uh, for the other communication partners, when is the perfect time to listen to the data? So is always sending and always listening is probably a huge waste of energy. So they are different, there are special uh, medium access control protocols for wireless sensor networks and we will have a look at this. Also you will have to think about routing. So which path does the data take to the network? Um, will there always be a connection from one animal in our example here to some kind of th sync? Or um, maybe do we expect connection losses? Is there a better path the data can take? Also, maybe a question of energy, which is the right path or the best or the, well, best for this purpose. So routing for wireless sensor networks is also different than for wired networks or for normal wireless networks. And we will have to think about programming. So where do we program such a network? Have we specialized different code for each and every node? So are we programming on a node level or uh, are there high level abstractions, maybe application centric? where we can program groups or the whole network. And uh, on the other hand, uh, we will have a look at some operating systems which support uh, programming of wireless, uh, wireless sensor networks. And last but not least, security. Um, so when thinking about the animals, uh, at least for the zebras. I do not know that there are any privacy concerns of zebras, uh, but uh, thinking of other use cases, privacy will be or may be a point. Or data safety. Do I get all my data from every zebra? 
So many different uh, security aspects uh, we will have to look at. And uh, we will. So, and all together uh, with this whole round, we probably will be able to support any or at least many wireless sensor networks applications uh, by looking first at the hardware part on the left and then on the software part on the right. The software part will be a little bigger. And all is somewhere under these orange uh, highlighted energy. Because, uh, as I told you before, energy is always crucial in such networks. Well, in most networks. So that's all for today. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.